Columbia Fire Department, I'd like to introduce my, my colleagues, uh, Chris Jones with Woodall Fire and uh, Jacob Patrick with uh, Park Fire Department. We're here today to tell you uh, a story about data. Um, it's not dramatic, it's not, not very popular, but it is what's going to be driving the future of the fire service. This, this is the group project problem that we were given. Um, it's a hundred word essay that confused us when we read it. And, and so, I mean, truly, it was a deer in the headlights, and it basically is an alternative to ISO. What we figured out, though, that to find an alternative to ISO, you're going to have to talk to the customer of ISO, and that's going to be the insurance company. So what we did is, is after, again, trying to figure out what this meant, we placed a call to our, uh, our esteemed leader, Chief Palmer, and he said, look, hypothetically, Many of us are going to be in front of an elected body or, or, or city manager or county administrator. You're going to ask for staffing increase, capital improvement, a large expenditure. How many of us have been present or had uh, the, uh, I guess, the, the, the inkling to say, well, because ISO says so? And so what we tried to do was we tried to assemble uh, a set of tools, if you will, to help you answer the question a little bit better than ISO says so. So, instead of reading all of this to you, what we've done is we're trying to answer that question better than ISO says so. ISO says we need it. Not a very good response because you know there's a follow-up question uh, that's going to be very aggressively presented to you by an elected official if you, if you answer the question with that. So an overview of what we're going to do is the importance of collecting data. Again, not a very popular thing. But data is what drives this world today. It's going to be driving. We saw a presentation earlier based on data. One of the components we're going to be talking about was actually entwined in, in their presentation. Is accreditation the answer? Can be. Very intimidating presenting to this crowd. We have an accreditation chief officer right here. I know some, uh, some other colleagues are going through or just recently have been accredited. But yes, it can be the answer because it meets a lot of needs that ISO doesn't need. During, during some of our research, we conducted a, a, a conference call with Chief Atkinson. One of the components that, that were void with ISO is it's not geographic based, it's not community based. Throughout California is graded just as South Carolina. We talked about how, Jenna said, how does the education fit your community? Well, accreditation can meet that need. It is community specific risk analysis process, again, you are analyzing the risks that are present in your community and then developing uh, strategic strategies, tactics, and response plans to meet those needs. And then the electronic toolbox, we'll go over that. Future tools, there are some things in, that are uh, in place right now in the works. We're going to give you those, those a review of those to show you how you can use those uh, to, again, answer those questions and help build a uh, plan for the future. And then we're going to close up with I mean, conclusion. Um, when we start talking about collecting data, um, data must be caught. Um, I sit through a training with a um, lady from the uh, State Fire, Fire Marshal's office, and she gave us this um, term here, data mm -hmm. must be caught. So we collect this data, we need to make sure that the data is complete. We need to make sure that it's accurate, reliable, and timely. Any of you that said in the individual projects, uh, Teddy made a statement that I've never heard before. Um, but jump that in, you can jump that out. So we have to be careful on what we put in, pay attention to what we put in, so that we can get the correct data out to go in front of council or our administrator when we want to make these capital purchases or place a station somewhere else. Because if we don't have the correct data, then we don't really have a legal standard. All right, and uh, I know most of y'all from here, I don't know if I'm going to be the dead horse, but y'all know, know what NIFRS is, National Fire Incident Reporting System. Uh, more than 24 million incidents were reported in 2015. Show of hands real quick. How many of you know for a fact your department reports to NIFRS? <coughs> so all, all around the room, good. Y'all, I, I knew this audience would be like this because we are the leaders of the fire service, so I know, but we have people out there rural departments that are still doing handwritten reports, not submitted to the database, and as you can see, 
only 85% have submitted reports in the last six months. So there's a problem there. I know the State Farm Officer's Office is working on it, but again, going back to what Jacob says, before we do anything, we've got to have the data. And that's the problem we're facing right now. We've got to have the data. The instance they talked about with fire deaths, the inconsistencies, guess what? That's a data problem. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit later. Okay, so uh, we're going to get into the specific components that we're going to recommend as alternatives, if you will. One of them being accreditation. We talked about that. The Center for Public Safety Excellence, and one arm of it is Commission on Fire Accreditation International. But I think it's good to know that the Center for Public Safety Excellence, who knows who established, besides Mike, who knows who initiated, who, who established that, that, that agency? Anybody? Steve Carter? You read your finger. International Association of Fire Chiefs in 1986. Chief Ronnie Coleman was one of the organizers of that. International Association of Fire Chiefs and the International City and County Administrators and Managers Association. I bet every one of us here report to a county administrator or city manager at some form or another. Our bosses endorse, help develop the accreditation of uh, agency that are going to accredit us. That's good to know. Good enough. And so what is accreditation? Without reading this, what it is, is it's a, a, a way for you to self-assess your organization, analyze the risks that are present in your community, develop a strategic plan for your department, response standards of coverage for your area, and then through that, you were given accreditation. It's, it's historically, what, we, what I've done is, is, is you're able to self-assess community risk, standards of coverage and strategic plan, but what is comparable to ISO in that? ISO only cares about what you're doing the day they get there and three years prior, right? You change tomorrow, they'll come back and reevaluate you. Whereas accreditation, it's what you're doing today. The risks that are present today and then what you're gonna do in the future to improve, to meet those evolving risks. What ma manager, what leader won't like something where you're going to make yourself, mandate yourself to be improved. And so there were four components internally that an organization has to do to be accredited. But there are four steps, obviously, to be accredited. You have to register for the, with, uh, with CIPSI, if you will. It's a three-year registration. And then the application is encouraged by CIPSI in the third year. What are you doing, what are you doing for those first two years? Well, you are doing the self-assessment. You're doing the community risk analysis, you're developing your standards coverage plan, and you're coming up with your strategic plan. And then when you become a candidate, you have a peer review team that comes, comes on site, fellow firefighters, that come to your organization and review your four components, look at your organization, and they grant you accreditation if they so desire. If not, they're going to give you a plan on how you will achieve accreditation. And so community risk analysis, instead of going through all four components of each one of, of, of uh, accreditation, to, to us, we feel like this was the most vital. Because as Jenna said, as Chief Atkinson told us during our conference call, nothing was community specific whenever it came to our education in Jenna's case, the ISO with Chief Atkinson's case. Community risk, you're able through the uh, standards of coverage and community risk self-assessment you're able to go into your community. You're able to analyze the risks that are present in your community. You're able to develop plans that, that take in consideration population explosion if you're a resort town. Demographics, we talked about socioeconomic impacts. It's different in different states, different regions in the state. You're able to analyze your jurisdiction and develop a, a, a response plan, strategic plan, self-assessment, how to improve specific to your department and your community. And so here, real quick, you know, visually, you probably can't read this, but what we've done, and, and all this will be available for y'all afterwards, I'm gonna provide a printed copy if y'all like. What we've done is we've taken some components of ISO, and then with accreditation, compared them to what accreditation does. And real quick, as we talked about ISO reviews, <coughs> historical data only. But this uses historical data to develop futuristic goals. ISO evaluates need, needed fire flow, whereas specifically accreditation, they look at hazmat components or the high risk components that are in your community. 
not just those fire flow pieces. They actually, if, if you're uh, using an EMT component, they'll evaluate that as well, and so on. So historically, times, this, this is a big one. We all know this, historical response times more the five road mile method. How many people have, uh, have homes that are protected in your jurisdiction that are point one tenth whatever outside of five road miles? Another thing the Chief Atkinson brought up to us, you know, this, there is no, but you can't say, well, I need a station here because ISO needs it. But if you're able to provide data, run response times. If there is hazards in that area through your community risk analysis, then you can say, this is why I need a station. So now we get to Vision 2020. I think Jenna said something earlier about it, and, uh, and Jake was going to speak to us a little bit about that. All right, Vision 2020 um, was a project that was started in 2008 by the Institution of Fire Engineers, um, the United States branch. And it started as fire prevention. And they have a six step process, it's free, online, um, that you can go on their website. And we're going to talk about how we felt it was important for our project. Um, with accreditation, like I say, a lot of chiefs look at it, um, mine in particular, oh, well, I can't justify paying for that. So we tried to look at it as an alternative for the department to be able to do basically close to the same thing for a little to no money. Um, so Vision 2020, um, step one, risk assessment, process to identify the various risks in your community and our service area, which goes back to your area. Accomplished by gathering data, um, acquired information on what was occurring within your community. Um, 1A acquired data that identifies the risk. You have uh, need instant dates and times, instant types, locations, cause conditions and fires, um, mortality rates, um, EMS mechanisms of injury, um, occupancy information, and response times, and the rate of dollar loss of value. All data that will put in differs, um, or pretty much it will put in differs when we uh, turn in a report. Um, develop, uh, step 1B, develop a community profile. So once we get this data, we have to develop that community profile. Um, some things we look at, the question was brought up with the last group, is this is our demographic. So we look at age, gender, income, um, race, social and cultural uh, information, education, um, housing type, age, and density. Um, all of this is important. And you can go through the census. Um, there's a lot of different organizations that you have to bring into play. And in Vision 2020, they walk you through all those steps of the, the players that you can incorporate. Still want to see identify casual factors, popular, uh, population to credit risk, um, social factors, economic, environmental, um, specific uh, populations, children age five, uh, age five and under, adults 65 and older, uh, people with disabilities, um, people living in poverty, and the big problem that's occurring now is populations that speak little or no English. 1B, identify your target hazards. Um, Media risk assessment, identify specific tar target hazards within your service area, sometimes referred to as critical facilities. Um, some of these facilities are hospitals, assisted living centers, community shelters, schools, airports, um, foreign government offices, emergency <coughs> operations centers, hazardous material sites, roadways, water sewer uh, treatment facilities, and communication systems. All right. Step two, once you've gathered all this data, you have to prioritize your risk. And step two, they have some tables and graphs in their handouts and on their website that actually help you take the data that you collected and pretty much prioritize it and grade it. Um, it has a different chart for your attributes and your vulnerability. And then step three is putting it all together. 
So as you collect your data, quantify your data, prioritize your various risks, it would be necessary to distill it into a legible and decipherable document. Keep in mind the document may be reviewed by individuals, community partners, elected officials, and others without technical expertise or backgrounds in fire service and risk assessment. Um, once you get all this and start putting it together, you got to have some tools in order to put it in those graphs, put it on those charts, in order to get it out um, to the people that may not be in the fire service or understand how the fire service operates. Um, so with that, Chris has got some tools that you can use to put this data together and get it out. Thank you. All right, I know that not all of us are computer experts like me. So, um, I'm going to give you some tools that you can take back to your department and get your computer expert to use, or you know, if, you, if you're confident enough to use yourself. These are tools that are readily available that we can take the data that we have now. And we're all gathering because we're all in this room. We're all submitting our different reports on time and sending them to the fire marshal's office. So we're all gathering the data, but how can you use that and interpret that data to help make a risk analysis process like Mike and Jacob have talked about? So I'm going to run through these real quick. These are free tools available today. Um, you have a summary output reports tool. This is through the uh, FEMA, through the U.S. Fire Administration. Microsoft Excel. How many of you have Excel? Right in. Excel on the computer? <laughs> All right. We, we see that one. Good. Good. Um, BatchGeo.com is a website I found that you can use to analyze your data to actually map it. And I'll show you an example of that. And then Google Maps. How many of you use Google Maps? Everybody got on their phone, right? Android Apple, that one phone. All right, this is an example of a sort report that I pulled from my volunteer department. I know you can't see it, it's kind of small, but I'll go through and kind of hit the highlights. This actually shows how many calls we have, percentage of calls, average suppression personnel, average other personnel, average man hours, response time. This is available on FEMA's website. If you have an account through NIFRIS, you can get with Samantha at the State Fire Marshal's office. If you do not have an account, she can get you an account to get into the system. There's like 20 canned reports that are already designed and built for your department. So if you're submitting information to NIFRS, it pulls that data back down. It's web-based, easy to use, like that, you have a report. There's a number of different ways. I'm not going to get too technical on it. If you'd like more information about it, I would be glad to, to share with you individually. But that resource is out there and available if you need, need that resource. Also, this was something that I just discovered, and I'm, I'm supposed to be a computer expert, but I, I discovered this a few months ago. Thanks to Samantha, and you know, I give her all the credit. Um, Chief Ray sent me over to talk to her about analyzing some data. And I did not know until recently that 2013 Excel, 2016 Excel has a built-in mapping function. You take your data, put it in a column, address the city, state, highlight that column, hit one button pulls it up and maps it. Because everybody, it's kind of hard to see, but that big blue line right there, you see that top one, big blue one goes up? This is Blue Golf. This is our EMS calls for 2015. This is one of our affluent apartment complexes. We had 18 EMS calls in that apartment complex last year. Now when you look at that data, that really stands out on that map. If I was to give you that in a spreadsheet, probably what would you look at? You look at the data, you probably wouldn't even pay attention to it. But that's a way to show trends using GIS mapping, which is part of that risk assessment, risk analysis process, and it's out there for free. Now to get to this point, it is kind of complicated because you have to export out your data into it from NIFRS to an Excel spreadsheet. But once you get it to an Excel spreadsheet, I know some of y'all are computer experts, you can do anything with it once you get it to a spreadsheet. And this is one tool that you can use it's free. I'll use it today. Batchgeo.com. If you're not, if you don't like using Excel, if you want something a little easier, um, you can actually take data, copy it from a spreadsheet, paste it into this website. This website created this map for me in like a minute. I just pasted the data in, and voila, I put all the points up there. These are all the calls that live out there from 2015, and they're color coded based on different. Now, this site does cost money. It's not free. It's only free for 250 rows of data. But if you have Excel, you can use Excel. But if you didn't have Excel or something like that, you can use this as a resource as well. 
And then Google Maps. Everybody has a Google account, right? Google Maps. If you go into your Google Maps account and go to My Places, you can actually create custom maps. And all I did was took our spreadsheet of call locations that we had in 2015 for Lugoff, imported it up to Google, and they put all these little push pins on the map for me to show me where the calls were in 2015. So this is something that, and I'm showing you these resources because if you don't have a firehouse or you don't have fire programs or your, your our records management system doesn't do mapping, there's ways to make that happen so we can use that, that data when we do our risk analysis process, we can look at it on the map, get a visual. Because I know visuals, everybody likes visuals, right? So that will give us, and that's one of the parts of our toolbox today, is giving you guys a resource that y'all can use to make these visuals for these decision makers. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the future. Just hit it, hit it real quick. Um, there's a new website coming out called firecares.org. It is funded through an AFG grant. That's right there. I know all of us got AFG grants. I'm employed because of the AFG grant, so um, Same research team as the Spartanburg Burns, so I know a lot of y'all are familiar with that. Um, they've collaborated with the, all the Alphabet Soup Metro Chiefs. They take this risk analysis process and all this data, and they're doing it for you. They're crushing all the numbers for you. They're putting all the information together. The website is still in development, so that's why I didn't want to the website is still in development to roll out October 16th, sometime in October 16th. Um, I do have a demo account that I was able to log in and actually I take some screenshots. Um, this is Boston Fire Department in the Fire Cares website. This is where I logged in and took a screenshot. And basically, this system is taking all your socioeconomic statistics like Marquise was talking about, population, number of fires, fire deaths, putting all that together. And it's actually going to grade our departments based on all that information. So you see the performance score on the right is Boston Fire Department's performance score. It's based on a comparative analysis to other fire departments, similar size, similar populations. And there are several mathematical formulas that they use, but overall it's based on time, like time to dispatch time, alarm time, time to arrival, time to suppress. How many of us are recording times, show of hands, for uh, primary search completed, secondary search completed, uh, water on fire, fire out. How many of y'all are doing all that? Most time it's just, you know, on scene, patrol, clear, right? Four, four times. <coughs> so once things improve, we're able to feed more data into this. This is going to benefit us as well. But this is more of an automated process to where accreditation and Vision 2020, their risk analysis models, is more of a manual process. And also, when we're talking about community risk assessment, this they've actually graded Boston's area as high fire risk, high fire spread, high death injury spread risk through their mathematical formulas, comparing all that big data as they're calling it. And that's their key word, is big data. They're putting all that data together, comparing it with our fire injuries, with our fire deaths, with our fire incidences, creating that risk analysis model for us. And this is a, another screenshot of showing the, an individual station with their response outlet. Um, like I said, it's going to come out in October 16th. So we've got a little bit more time. They're still tweaking some things. I talked with the director of the project. They're still tweaking a few things. But hopefully it's going to roll out in October. I think it will really help us in the future to develop these risk analysis plans. And then the National Fire Data System, as you know, uh, the National Fire Incident Reporting System has been around a long time. And it's outdated. And the things I've heard is it's complicated and we need to change it. Well, it's not going to go away anytime soon. But what NFPA is going to do is they're going to take lessons learned from another project called NFORS and develop that into a supplementary system to help us gather this data. So all these times I told you about, the, you know, the primary search completed, secondary search completed, um, water to the fire, fire extinguished. <clears throat> We're going to start collecting all this data and put it in a repository that's going to be a national level repository. And it has three modules. It has an instance module, operation module, and health and wellness module. And I know Chief Colano, you're, you're big on the cancer. <coughs> and we started the cancer database. Well, what if we had a database of, of exposures to us? 
And that's what this project is going to do. This project is going to take, allow us as firefighters to keep track of our exposures to these harmful chemicals. So 20 years down the road, we have a record of what we've been exposed to. That's their ultimate goal with the health and wellness side of it. Again, it's not going to replace NIFRS, but it's going to capture this operational data that we're not using right now and this health data. Now, this project well, was under another name, in 4s going to switch over to the National Fire Data System. They're applying for funding, so it hasn't been funded yet. But their ultimate goal is that, you know, fire programs, firehouse, you know, emergency reporting could feed into these things and, and be a, a big repository of this data for future use. So conclusion. Um, again, what we've done is, is we I showed you the 100-word essay that, that we were presenting to, to extrapolate a problem and come up with a solution. Well, when we found out this was not a graded project, we respectfully rejected our question and we created our own. So uh, what we've done is we took that, that essay and we, we, we came up with a problem statement. We wanted to create a presentable set of tools to use current data to support decision-making and educate Southwest fire service leaders. And we talked about a lot of programs here uh, and glazed over a lot. They're very complex. We'd love to talk to you about individuals. You can see the ones that, uh, that Chris are pretty passionate about. I feel like moderately knowledgeable about accreditation in the project of 2020. So we'd love to speak to you if you have any interest in one or all of those. But so what we've done is, and you can see when we, when we created these set of tools, what was the commonality? You, you can probably guess it from the title of our slide and, and the center of this. The circle chart, this data, whether it be accreditation, your strategic plan is going to be uh, obviously driven by data, your community risk analysis, everything is based on the data that you give. When we talked about this, Chief Palmer said we need deliverables. Your boss says deliverables, you can come up with something to deliver. So we've given you these, these different things that you could use or employ. To, to answer the question by, you, by your boss whenever you wanted to make a capital expenditure or, or a large request. But how do you employ these things? Well, there are training programs out there that will help you. And, and the NFA actually has something. Chris, we'll talk to you about that. Yeah, the, uh, the NFA offers three classes, in fact, based on the members reporting. Um, I, I personally would like to go to them. I plan on going to them eventually, but I know several of y'all probably went to them before. Um, this will be an excellent way to get started, but a local way to get started, like I said, is talk with Samantha at the State Fire Marshal Office. She's our resource. So you can't go to the National Fire Academy, you know, go over and sit with her for two hours. That's what I did, you know, a few months ago. And she, she showed me all kinds of stuff. But these are these are classes, and we'll have links to this. We'll talk a little bit about that later. We'll have links to these classes available. Send your people. There's, the first one is a two-day introduction, and then the second one is a six-day, and the third one is a six-day. But if y'all have a chance to go, and I, I would love to go too, just to, just to help myself learn more about this and, and learn more about extracting this data and using it for decision making this process. And then there's the accreditation, the Center for Public Safety. Actually, they have uh, excellence. They have training courses as well. Um, year round, they, they, they have uh, national uh, courses that they, they offer. And, and you can go through that. They also have mentoring and technical advisor programs where they'll come in and help you with your strategic plan, with your self-assessment, with your community risk analysis. They'll come in and help you. Then the data analysis presentation, again, they, these are classes that they have that they offer, again, year-round. It's a mentoring program as I, as I talked about. The deliverables. We develop a, a spreadsheet that's going to have a, that all, all the, the links that we talked about and some of the tools and tech, we're going to talk about that. Um, we, we put the spreadsheet together and it's going to be on our presentation. It's going to go on the training website. So any fire chief around the state can go on and start pulling up links for Vision 2020 for risk analysis, um, citizen accreditation, uh, list of tools to analyze current data data, and the list of links to future tools and development such as the fire carriers. So that way, even if the chief's not here, that, that, uh, that data is available to them and the tools on that spreadsheet link. There's also uh, a couple letters for accreditation that Mike found, um, there were some interesting reads. So just a lot of tools to actually, somebody can go ahead and start right away 
working on putting his dad together. I know my chief, my department, he's real interested in it because he's been talking about it um, here recently. So I told him, I said, I got something to go first for. <laughs> so. Yeah, and anybody is, you know, anything is Googleable. So you, you can go online and Google Accreditation 2020 and all of them. But what we try to do is we try to each one of us put together a small package to, to, to deliver to a, to a small town sheet or even even larger to help them acclimate, you know, to, to you know, because again, there's, there's hundreds of uh, videos and articles on all of these things. But, you know, I've got the order form for the self-assessment. You know, for a hundred bucks, I bought the self-assessment guide in the community I mean, in the uh, response standards of coverage book. Myself, I bought any starry-eyed green chief walking in and not knowing what to do. For a hundred dollars, he has a playbook on how to assess his fire department, the community he's protecting, and develop a plan to improve in the future. For a hundred bucks. And so you're asked, why do you want to put this station here? No longer do you have to say ISO said so. We've given you some tools that you can gather to gather data help answer that question accurately and educate and be aware of all and for follow questions. And so with that, um, again, I'm Mike Levin's Columbia Fire Department, and on behalf of my colleagues, Jacob Patrick, City Officer, Chris Jones, Luke Alpine. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity. It has been an honor to, uh, to work with the, uh, this team right here to serve y'all, uh, to help possibly solve problems, and, and uh, we are done following any solicited uh, remarks and questions. <laughs> 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 Question.